Yeah, that's true. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the first of our two budget sessions. I'd like to begin as we normally do with a moment of silence, standing for that, and then follow that with the Pledge of Allegiance. Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. If we could have a roll call, please. Brad Hitt. Here. Ken Snyder. Here. Keith Hamill. Here. Wayne Marahona. Here. Tom Ager. Okay. Moving on then to the approval of the agenda. Take a motion for that, please. So moved. Support. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Marahona? Aye. Camel? Aye. Snyder? Aye. Ken? Aye. Uh, I don't see anyone here. It looks like they will be, I see presenters for down the road, but no one here that's uh, speaking in terms of public forum. Were there any written comments? None. Okay. So we'll move right on then into the review of the mayor and council goals. Can lead us through that, Sam? I really don't have anything to say on that other than probably time for a recalibration have a, and to have a visioning session sometime this year. So working with uh, Kurt Strauss on getting something scheduled. Okay. Any questions about that at all? Comments you'd like to make? If not, we'll wait to hear how that plays out. We will move on. Beginning with our department presentations. First one will be ambulance. You're up. Hi, Kristen. You guys all have my budget memo in front of you. You guys have read through it. Um, the only uh, thing I'd like to highlight is when I did my budget, I requested in my budget form that we submit for IPERS for our members and to be paid monthly. Um, unfortunately, Angie missed that in the budget, so it's not in your guys' budget worksheets or whatever. Um, just wanted to bring that up. Me and Angie talk. Um, we are still requesting it. And we're still requesting the members be paid monthly. There's also something in the future with recruitment and retention that Sam will present or you guys have. Um, but that is the only extra thing I wanted to add. Otherwise, I'll leave it up to questions. Do we have a number on what that is for the that, diapers? The number we figured out was 7,000. Anyone else? Looks like you're going to get left off easy. You know what? That's okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, Kristen. Yep. All right. Uh, city attorney is up next. Mm -hmm. Nothing there. Crossroads Pavilion. Tricia? We have, uh, ooh, let me hit start. Okay. So before you is our memo and our budget that we have proposed. There's really not a lot of changes. Our revenues are pretty much awash with our expenses. Um, the only thing that's really significantly different would be higher is the bar sales, but that's also because the supply cost is going up as well. Um, and then this year we're just gearing up to do the storage structure. And then in our capital improvement, we're looking forward to updating the green room and eventually parking. Do you have any questions for me? <laughs> I 
Anyone? You've kept us pretty well informed uh, through the course of the year, so it's wonderful to know that we were uh, the, that the pavilion was selected as the number wedding, one number wedding, one venue. wedding venue and reader's number, choice. Yeah, so yeah, that's great. We're pretty busy. Appreciate all your efforts. Pass it along to your staff as well. Thank you. I will do that. All right. Anyone? Last chance. All right. EMA. Is that the hat you're going to wear now, Wayne? Yeah. You going to make me get up? No, you may. All right. Uh, really, really no changes from uh, what we had last year. No, no major expenditures. No. Uh, we do have a new vehicle on the horizon in our CIP, but for right now, it's uh, down the road a little bit yet. Biggest expense we have is tires for the entire organization. So there you have it. Okay. Any questions for Wayne today? If not, we'll move on then to fire. Brad. Um, our budget, uh, it ended up being about a 7.8 increase, percent increase. Um, capital items, um, you have a sheet on the next page. They haven't been in the uh, capital improvement plan for a number of years. Um, there's a couple items that um, are possibly being cost shared with the fire department, our annual fundraiser. Um, those would be the uh, thermal imaging cameras and the washer extractor for our fire gear. Um, don't know what the cost split might be, but we'd be willing to help throw some money towards those two items. Um, the other item is several a couple of years ago we talked about changing over to per hour instead of per call and we have adjusted that here over the last um, couple of weeks we've been fine-tuning that and I think we'll fine-tune that as we go down the road so other than that that's all I have all right. any questions for the fire department not, then we will move on to the library, Nicole. Uh, well, you've received my memo. You can see we're only asking for um, areas of increases in um, essential areas, and which is energy and um, staff areas. Uh, in terms of future needs, I am working with um, Sam on some CIP issues. What questions do you have for me? We're uh, establishing a pattern here. Yes. So, Thank thanks, Nicole. All right, police, you're up next, Chief. If you guys have seen mine, it's not a whole lot different. Just a couple of adjustments, just basically me um, getting used to the budget. A couple of things that we increased, you know, were motor vehicle operation supplies. Um, that's just kind of accounting for the fuel cost. Obviously, that can change. Some of the other things we looked at were um, professional fees. That kind of varies year by year, obviously. Um, Sam will tell you, too. It kind of depends if I need help with personnel issues and stuff, but I feel um, the current budget isn't enough, just in case, because I, I think last year I went over, if I remember right. Uh, CIP-wise, um, not a whole lot different than what we had before. Some of that stuff will probably actually change for the better. Um, uh, the things like the computers and ballistic panels, I had budgeted for some of that stuff and I'm actually taking care of some of it this year and it's been cheaper than I thought. So um, the CIP will actually probably end up being a little bit less than what it is down there. So. Okay. Anything else? No, and if I did my math right, uh, I think our 
budget looked at about a seven and a quarter percent increase. Okay. Any questions for Scott? Very good. Thanks, Chief. Will there be anybody presenting for the airport today? I do want to hit a few of the highlights. No show, no money. Yeah. Well, when I became the airport manager, but um, <laughs> no show, no money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, well, basically, the airport's memo, I guess, speaks for itself. They talk about the aircraft that's out there and how it's being utilized as far as projects. They have um, a runway rehabilitation project <laughs> that actually opened opened bids today. Uh, good bids, by the way. Uh, came in under estimate by about 70000 So. Um, and they have a few other uh, improvement projects that we're looking to fund with uh, TIF out of this upcoming budget. So um, property taxes, they didn't get any last year, and I believe the proposed budget shows they get none again because they are uh, doing, doing okay financially with their land rents, and we are supporting them with urban renewal funds for their project, which has made a big difference to their operations budget. So I guess I'll stand for questions for the airport if you got any. The runway project, is that a uh, FAA match again, the 10%? It's a 90-10 project, yeah. yep. 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 Uh, five, the low bid today was five, 541, something like that. And that will involve a shutdown, correct? Yeah, it's probably a 68-week shutdown, yep. Yep, it's a crack seal, full depth repair, partial depth repair. Um, it's needed, though. Um, some people, maybe you don't realize it's the runway, but any, any little debris, any little crack, um, any squalling in the corners, that's very hard on jet engines and props. So they try to be very cautious of, of debris on runway and that this project will help a lot with that. But it's, it's delaying for the future. It needs either full replacement or we're working actually probably <laughs> towards some type of a long-term overlay seven to 10 years from now. This is just a bias in time. So mm -hmm. essentially it's a half million dollar Band-Aid to bias maybe five, uh, seven to 10 years. Do you know what they're gonna do for the interim during that shutdown? Sorry, yeah, air traffic. Move, move planes. <laughs> That's all you can do. Yeah. Put, nice. Move planes and work with the contractor. You know, crack ceiling, you can work around, get it on off a little bit, but full depth repairs, the, the runway's down. Yeah, just, just the way it is. It's an inconvenience, but it's part of, part of progress, just like when we close the street. Yep. What types of projects are not 90-10 match? Oh, boy. Are they just, just, are just they about everything. System. What's that? The fuel system is 7525. Yeah, fuel, you're right. How about that the hangar? Less, um, Aren't there some hangar well, the, the, projects? There are some hangars that I think we'll need to be cautious whether we utilize TIF dollars for, and that's maybe a different discussion, Beat. Okay. Because of because of qualifying funds. Okay. But but I think hangar projects can still qualify under their 9010. Oh. But they might need to be funded differently on our end. Okay. Um, large hangar projects can be funded the way we're talking about okay. through, through TIP funds. Um, certain equipment, Pete, is not eligible for the FAA funding, like mowing equipment, um, um, okay. stuff like that. Good enough. Yeah. All right. Do you want? Are you doing the public works? Uh, all those various ones as well? Uh, yeah. Those are actually my departments. Yes. You want to do, do you, <laughs> but my question, I'm asking, do you want to just step and do those and we'll switch you flip flop? Oh, I don't care. That's up to you guys. If you want me to, I can. If you need a minute, we can certainly. I, I don't know. Okay. Then why don't you just, as long as you're up there, okay, let's just roll those in first. All right. Hey, yeah. you did well on the airport. By Thanks. The yeah. Um, I, I believe the construction schedule is, um, September, Sam? Sounds right. Yeah. Uh, it's a ways away. I'll, I'll, I'll look it up and see if I can get it to you. Yep. Um, all right, so cemetery. Um, I'll start with a fun date at cemetery. 7 15, 1983. Anybody, any guesses? <coughs> so what date? July 15, 1983. The day our cemetery section started working for us. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Um, Rick is uh, Rick is approaching retirement, 
So that's probably one of the bigger news or bigger upcomings and things that we'll have to worry about um, at the cemetery. I don't know if it'll be this fiscal year or next fiscal year, but just so you know, there is a there is a program payout in this year in case out of the water fund actually in case he does retire. Um, he's contemplating. He'll make that decision when it's right for him. Anyways, beyond that, we want to continue with tree removals and um, and uh, road improvements and uh, you know kind of plan for the future. We may change things up um, with him passing on. He's been here for 40 years. Um, it's always a good time to reevaluate. Are you still doing things uh, the right way, right? So, any questions on cemetery? I was four months old, if anyone was counting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and just, just the other thing to maybe note on that is how, how many of you have a 40-year employee and how many 40-year employees do you think the city will get moving forward? Not many. Right. Times have changed, right? Amen. The, yeah. Uh, anyway, park. Um, park memo should speak for itself. Uh, similar requests as we've had in the past. As you know, we're combining uh, with the rec to bring the new person on full time there, pay for part of that out of the park. Um, bad news there. Uh, yesterday was first review of applications. Quick process. We have none. Oh we have zero applicants. Um, so uh, Trevor has some family uh, concerns this week. So we'll um, we'll get uh, get back to that next week, readdress, reevaluate, and see where we go from there. But otherwise, park will continue to operate like it's been. The contract mowing appears to be working well. I get more compliments. Um, since we've switched that and the way we used to do it, we have less headaches uh, with part-time staff. I think it's been a good switch. So any questions on park? The position that you have, what are, are there minimum qualifications that are required? <clears throat> well, we'd like to see somebody with a, with a rec services degree of some sort, but we would certainly train the right person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just um, anybody that has an interest in helping our youth and, and, and you know, doing some things in parks would be a great addition to the team. Yeah. yeah, but zero applications is certainly discouraging. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, rec, same story. Big story in rec is what there's a, uh, not a big story, but the biggest increases you see in rec is wages. We've been tried to increase a lot of our, uh, our youth wages for our helpers, and same thing goes at our pool. Uh, we, we've got to keep up with the other markets in town. We're struggling to get people hired. So those are the biggest increases you'll see in REC. Um, you, their funding requests are in here uh, that you can deal with when we get to Lost, as far as Splash Pad, Dog Park, those kind of sorts of things. Questions? There is several justification pages <coughs> data there for the part-time wages increases. I hadn't heard anything from you, so I assume we're in agreement there. We've adjusted rates accordingly. Um, <clears throat> road use tax. Uh, road use tax funds continue to say what I would say struggle. Um, this will be the second year in a row we're not proposing actual funding road improvements through RUT, but funding them other ways. Well, we're doing that to help cash balances in RUT and, and, and actually be able to allow us to support some of these funding requests that you see in front of us. Uh, as it's laid out, it works just fine. Um, it's a short-term solution for probably a long-term problem, but uh, it's one that we as staff will continue to try to solve. Um, yeah, otherwise I think the memo stands for itself. We have several projects that we're getting ready to go on again, and then the next big rebuild would be Western Avenue, and that would be a year from now. So, yeah, here, uh, 25000 for the cost of a plow truck. Is that just a standard price for a used truck that you can get from DOT, or how does that work? Yeah, so DOT, DOT was flipping a lot of trucks, and boy, there was a time we were buying trucks for twelve, fifteen thousand 15000 Wayne, and I felt like I was stealing them off the lot. I couldn't get them off there quick enough, but DOT is not turning over near as many trucks as they were, um, so now we're having to go to outside market, and to be honest with you, it's 25000 getting tough. Um, I'm looking at buying just a standard dump truck right now, and I'm looking at closer to 60k. Um, How old is that? Uh, 2007, eight. Oh boy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, <clears throat> 25. The last, the last plow truck we bought was an 07, and I think we paid 18 something for it. But by the time we got it up to our standards, we were right at the 25. 
So if we can continue to get them from the DOT, that's a realistic number. If we have to start buying privately, um, costs, costs will go up. We like the DOT trucks just because they're typically uh, well maintained. We've made some relationships with some of the shops around and we've actually been able to pull a couple dead out of our shops. That's, that's kind of nice. Um, um, but that doesn't always work. How's our fleet looking as it stands? Uh, pretty good. We could use a couple yet. I, I really would like to replace two, but we are in a lot better condition today than we were 10 years ago. But everything that becomes more electronic, it becomes more expensive to repair too. True. Yeah. And our guys do a fair amount of shop work on our own, which saves us some out. But as these trucks advance, that gets a little tougher. Fortunately, we also have a good relationship with the DOT mechanic shops and phone calls and, and emails are quite helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Water. Um, water, The um, again, we've got, we've got the leg and copper thing that we talked about. You approved the contract for 120. That'll be a big step for us in the next year. Uh, the other hurdle in water is where our potentially looking at a retirement in water as well. Uh, Keith Van Drager, our water superintendent, has been here for 17 years. He started in 2006. Um, he is not sure yet either, but he is contemplating. So that will be a big deal. And then, of course, you'll see in the memo, I am asking for an FTE in that department. Probably something I should have been pushing for a few years ago already. Customers are, customers are a lot needier than they once were. Our system is aging. Uh, we're pushing harder on our water loss. We're, we're pushing harder on our valve repairs. We're pushing harder on our on our fire hydrant maintenance, and and we're just not keeping up with the needs. And to be quite honest with you, to go down to Department of One, uh, if I have to suffer through a retirement, will will be not not great. So um, it's it's time we up the staff. There's plenty of work to do. Um, there's there's money in the budget to do so, and. Um, it just needs to happen. Uh, we're looking at um, rate increase. Of, you've already approved one for the upcoming year. Remember, it's that blended nine and a half. Mm -hmm. Ange and I have been working hard on a rate study with DGR here for the, to, to try to project the next five years forward. And, and just to let you know, we'll be bringing something to you later, but you'll be looking at something in the probably 8% a year range for the next five years from water mm -hmm. is what we're going to need to continue to uh, sustain operating balances that are, that are good and continue to fund our CIP. But I, I can't stress enough that this community used to run their utilities where we had to borrow for everything. And we are not that way anymore. We are starting to build some cash balances where we can actually build for pay for projects. And a perfect example of that is the, the water tower, the, the existing water tower. Once our new one is built, we want to take that one out of service and recode it. Uh, the interior we did a few years ago, it's good, but the exterior is in need of a recode. The estimated cost on that project is $420,000 today. It'll be more by the time we actually do it. We will have cash on hand to pay for that project. We would not have had that 10 years ago or five years ago. So we are definitely headed in the right direction um, through this increases, in my opinion. And it seems like you guys agree, and I would hope we can stay on that trend. In, in relation to those increases, uh, and I'll ask you this uh, as a com <clears throat> combined question with both water and wastewater, do you feel like in five years, you know, roughly, that will be caught up to where maybe we should be uh, had, uh, you know, because obviously 8% year over year is, is pretty a, a pretty steep jump, but I we all know that we've been playing from behind for a long time. Do you, do you think we'll be at the point where we feel like increases beyond then are just going to be uh, what you would call industry standard or are we, will we still be digging out of a hole? Yeah, Wayne, well, I think that really depends upon how we try to fund some of our improvements moving forward, right? So um, do we continue to do some TIF-based road, water, sewer improvements if we put stuff in urban renewal funds or are we funding uh, all the stuff uh, based on rates. Um, again, it's part of having a very old aging system. So I, I give you an example, how aggressive do we want to get with upgrades? So a whole bunch of the inner square, so um, 11th Street, the, the highway, 2nd Avenue to Washington. whole bunch of that area has four inch water mains. 
um, <clears throat> that have lower fire flows. We as a team have, have designed and put some bigger trunk lines in there to kind of help that area. But recently we haven't been spending a lot of money on those upgrades because we've been spending money on, on you know, saving money for water tower recoats and those kind of things. If we want to continue to be aggressive and fund those rate based, we're probably going to have to stay a little more aggressive with our rates. If we can find a different way to fund some of those improvements, well, then, then maybe we can back off a bit. But the next five-year forecast is going to be strongly recommended. We stay in that 8% range a year, for, at least from myself. And I think I got the support of those two. But So if you just look at the, the current and the upcoming fiscal year, just two examples, 700,000 in Lewis and Clark. Yeah. Look up and three and a half million dollar water tower. Both of those are coming from a combination of grants and urban renewal. Not rate based. Right. And so imagine the impact of putting that into the rate. You'd yeah. be looking at a probably 25 to 40% increase. Wow. You'd be looking at the waste, you know, remember guys, we did, we did 90, 90 what percent over three years when we built that new wastewater treatment plant for, for a, for a, Ten million dollar project, so um, we're trying to stay away from that. But getting to a point where we have some cash on hand is going to help us with that. I, I believe Wayne, it's going to get to a point where it'll help us with what a little more rate stability. But 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 you can't go from a company that operates on borrowing everything to a company that operates on cash overnight. Right. You know, it just it, it's it's going to take time. Yep. But I believe we're headed in the right direction. Come on, get that handled, will you? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> Prove rate increases. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, um, that's what I have for water, unless there's more questions. Contract water sales coming up are going to be big for us. Um, can't I can't I can't say that enough. As we as we market off some of the Lewis and Clark water that we have uh, extra right now, that won't be necessarily extra later. I mean, think about it, folks. If we, we get these done, other people, other communities are basically going to pay for our long-term insurance policy for our community. And that, that alone, too, is saving rates to our customers. Our rates would be much higher um, if, again, we would be proposing higher rate increases if we weren't working on contract water sales. Do the prospects for continuing that look prof? Yes. Promising? Yes. Okay. Good. I, I mean... No guarantees till we get them con yeah. con contract signed. But if but if those negotiations go south, we may have to have a different discussion. With the uh, the onboarding of of Lewis and Clark here in in the uh, shorter time frame, how will the or will the uh, day to day or week to week duties of the water department change? Not much. Okay. Not much. We still treat water. We still have to process their water. We still have to blend their water. Um, there'll be some pretty substantial improvements within the plant itself and modifications, but the the ongoing daily activities of our staff won't change much. Um, what could change, and I'm a little afraid could change, is is any time you change water quality, water chemistry, you change things in the system, it could create more work in the system because it could create potentially more leaks that could create. Uh, there, there's an opportunity for more challenges in the system itself, which is all another reason to be stacked up with another another person ready to go and handle the challenges out there. Use the term FEE, is that what you were going to Full-time employee. Oh, FTE, okay. Yeah, FTE, sorry. I heard, oh, yeah. yeah. All right. My, tongue, my tongue got in the way. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, wastewater, uh, very, uh, very changes. Just again, uh, like in the memo, mostly inflationary, replacing some equipment, uh, more system maintenance. I could make a very solid argument that we should be spending much more than $100,000 a year um, on cameraing and smoke testing and, and whatever. But uh, Dean and I have talked about doing this for another year or maybe two, and then trying to put together another nice, good sized. Uh, lining project or something somewhere in town. Uh, we need to stay up on our collection system. It's easy to not look at it right now because it's been so dry the last few years, so we don't have a lot of inflow and infiltration right now. But when the rainy seasons come back, and they will, um, 
that'll that'll switch gears in a hurry because um, we'll take on a lot more water than what we what we need to. So, you know, those can include our own lines. They include service lines, include sump pump programs. Um, none of that is fun stuff to talk about, but it's all it's all a reality. And every extra gallon that goes into that system is a gallon that goes to the treatment plant, which is a gallon we pay to treat. So uh, with the example of us being roughly the double the amount of snow we don't really get, what's that going, are we anticipating that's all going to be running off or how do you, how do you foresee that or how do you prepare for that from the wastewater side? Yeah, we'll be fine. We, we, we'll, we'll put in action what we have to when the time comes. It depends on how quick it melts, Wayne. And I actually think there's not a ton of frost in the ground, so I'm hopeful a lot of it's going to soak in. A lot of the covered areas, I'm told, are uh, the frost is not that deep. So, yeah. Um, rate the wastewater, we're looking at 4% probably over the next um, five years. Uh, one thing I did want to mention, we, um, um, you, I don't know if you guys remember or not, we've taken some, some criticism over some of the apartment charges and whatnot. And, and all of our rate study stuff that Angie and I have been working on with DGR is supposed to be customer cost base. So make sure that every class of customer is paying the right rate for the service they're getting. Um, and I know that's hard to hit, but that's the goal, right? Pete, you can laugh all you want, but that's the goal. Good luck so, with that. Anyways, so while most of the wastewater will see an increase of about 4% a year roughly, um, the one division that we are going to propose to you in the upcoming that receives a decrease would be the apartment sewer charges, and that'll see about a 37% decrease over the next five years. So not in one shot, but over time. And that's, and that's in an amount, uh, in an effort to bring it back to what our rate study says is a fair cost share for that, for that area. So anyways, that's what I have for that. We have depth there yet, obviously, to pay off with the plant. Sam's got a question yeah. here. I'd like to circle back to the cemetery. OK. Um, and first of all, I apologize because I think I failed to link the cemetery and park memo, so I will get that linked tonight. Okay. <laughs> you okay. yeah. You're nothing um, better than a paper clip yeah. okay. on. <laughs> and then, so before you sit down, the $5,000 that we'd taken from loss the last couple of years yes. was used. Why don't you hit on that because that'll, that'll come up later tonight or tomorrow. Sure. So that's, um, we use that to fix and or reset stones that we can't find family members for. So if there's a stone tipped over or it looks dangerous and it needs to be reset and there's no, no errors that we can find anywhere, then we use that money to fix that stone before it hurts somebody or just looks in disrepair. So that's, we've been doing that now. This is this, we've done it for two years. We're on our second year of that, the request is for a third year of it. It doesn't take long to spend $5,000 when it comes to you know, taking an old stone and you know resetting it and stick, getting it back straight. And, and some of them are a hazard. I don't know if, how much attention you pay, but when they get leaning pretty good in some of them big old stones, it's, we don't want to see people get hurt. So that's why the request is there. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions from the council? All right. Thank you. I'm here all week. <laughs> <laughs> Kurt, SCDC. Good evening. So our memo is pretty self-explanatory as well. There's literally no change from the last couple of years as far as what the request from SCDC uh, is concerning. On behalf of the board of directors, they want to extend the thanks to the council and mayor for your support over the years. Um, 2022 actually ended up being a really, really good year. I'm not sure if you guys got a chance to look at our annual report that was in the newspaper last week. Our annual meeting got postponed a month because of inclement weather, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate. But you look at some of the statistics for, for Sheldon, I think um, so something to be excited about. Um, you look at the building permits over the last year, 71 new building permits, um, just almost $35 million in new total evaluation, which overall is the second largest valuation of new permits since 2010. Um, only second behind um, 2017 where Kent Nutrition by itself had a $37 million expansion project. So if you think about that, that was one really big project um, in, in culmination of the whole thing. So uh, local option sales tax, the city in calendar year set another record. 
uh, by collecting about $919,000. This is up by almost $140,000 from the year before. So we continue to set that bar pretty high locally as far as local option sales tax revenue, which is good when we're, we're looking at what that state's projection uh, looks like um, coming down from the state. So uh, hotel motel tax, like we talked about, set another record, uh, proving tourism continues to be at a high level. A um, number of new uh, commercial projects, uh, which we, we see across town. Uh, SCDC was funded uh, half a million dollars from USDA to expand our RLF program this year, which we're excited about. Wayne is familiar with the RLF program to be Very able to help so. some gap financing for, for businesses, so we're excited about that. And then as far as membership uh, within our organization, we set an all-time record as far as membership and revenue uh, for two years in a row. So we're excited about the support locally uh, within the organization as well. So uh, with that, I'll stand for questions. Um, but uh, overall, nothing will change from our, from our standpoint as far as the um, increase across the board. So anyway, thank you. In terms of the local office sales tax revenues mm -hmm. and stuff, you know, we're projecting a, the state has asked us to plan for a decrease. Yep. In terms of the Dollar Tree family dollar store, and, you know, and I don't know how soon they're going to come on. It looks like with the weather the way it is, they're construction schedule is slowed down but yep. do you see that as just transferring dollars from other other sources or will that help feed the feed that where local options would possibly go up again yeah I think I'm up. optimistic it's going to increase it because again you become a destination point right I mean of all different options for people to to come in and be able to shop and do some things and what Dollar Tree will be able to provide is something a little bit different as far as a niche as maybe what Dollar General, that's a, that's a common comparison, right? Dollar General and Dollar Tree, if you actually look at them, they're a little bit different in nature. So I think, you know, the common shopper may go to both of them in one day where some people go to Hy-Vee and Fairway in the same day to do groceries, right? I know we do. We go and get something at one place, we'll go to the other place and get it. So um, not only do I think it'll help with our local option sales tax, uh, Greg, it obviously helps increase our total valuation on that site as well by increasing property value by almost a half a million dollars from what it sat before as Nota Boom to where it will be when it's redeveloped. So that's perpetual revenue from the city that was not being received before. So um, I think it's got um, it's very positive on, on both that on both aspects. So yeah, just something I drove by the the other day and thought about that thought you know in light of the other discussion and thought yeah. that should help the cause and here for us anyway right and yeah you look at car dealerships I mean look at bigger cities you got car dealerships that are stacked up next to each other and they're all successful because what that does is brings people in to buy cars um, I, I look at that the same way as you talk to Joel Bowsma downtown he said the best thing you do for my business is put another shoe deal put another shoe store right next to me because there's there's options for for the buyer so it just brings people to town and they're more apt to spend money so if there's more amenities for people to draw in and do their shopping that's a, that's a positive and I think that's what Dollar Tree will help here in Sheldon okay. any other questions for Kurt very good good thank you thanks Kurt all right now we move on to the city clerk so my memo is pretty simple this year um, I just wanted to kind of hit on a couple things. Um, the airport, like Todd said, we do their high cash and investment balance. We have not allocated general property taxes for them. As far as the community building, uh, we are looking at upgrading our current software and I have split that between five departments um, within uh, the city. Health insurance, life and disability, we budgeted a 10% increase and we plugged in a 2.75% um, wage increase. Okay, then let's move on. Or does anybody need a break at this point? Bathroom break or anything? Um, I'm sure. So, what is your hope as far as how far you want to be in the agenda by the 6:30? Well, it'd be nice to get at least through um, city manager. Um, Number seven. Number seven. Okay. All right, just to kind of know what we're shooting for then too, everybody.
But 6.30 is hard stop, or do you want it to be? I would like it to be, yeah. Okay. okay. Then I would say we go until 6.30, okay. as far as we can. All right. I think the mayor gets hangry. <laughs> <laughs> if you, you want to get to through yours by 6.30, I'm going to fly. <laughs> Are we good? Uh, don't, Thank don't, you like that. Don't rush it. I, I don't okay. It's not... But I mean, it would just if we're six thirty, okay. that, that's our goal. Okay. But, but I thought I'd seen a memo about steak suppers tonight or something. <laughs> <laughs> I can order. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a credit card. Get <laughs> 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 out of there. <laughs> so we do get overtime. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, then let's roll into property tax revenue. Okay. So the tax levy is actually down a bit this year. Um, the employee benefits are up a little bit, but our debt, capa or our debt service um, levy has lowered. So the overall that we're looking at at this time is 15.08 compared to 15.24 in the current year. Any questions on that? So taxes went down. As of now. Just wanted to make sure certain people heard that, that there were a few report. Things, there were a few things mentioned earlier that would need to be added in. That would change things a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? What's the first thing I like that? So in terms of Joe Homeowner, that levy, in terms of dollars, what does it mean? It's, uh, that we don't want the levy, is, but what, what does it really mean to the homeowner? Isn't it? Slightly less. Few, yeah. A few cents less, a few dollars less. What no, it's per hundred thousand. Per hundred thousand. Yeah. Or per thousand, right? Oh, per thousand? Sorry. Yeah. I'll, we'll find out for you. Okay. All right. While you're looking that up, you move on. Okay. Going into okay. revenue. Um, I'm just going to hit a couple things. So we've got police federal grant. That ex that's a reimbursement of our additional full-time police officer that we have. And it is only at about a third. I think we're going into our final year on his reimbursement, and then we will not receive a reimbursement anymore. Uh, gifts received, that is shop with a cop. Um, going down through here uh, to the fire contract, those are still being negotiated, but I took what we anticipate for um, the ones that are not settled. Um, ambulance charges, I did increase a little bit just based on where we're at currently. Uh, let's see, garbage fees, I increased slightly because the new contract does have it, have a, a slight increase. On to the next page. Uh, the reimbursement, that was, that is blank this year, that was our reimbursement from NCC for the position that we share, the recreation position we shared. We are not going to do that in the future, so that is no longer coming in. Um, Keep going down and then we'll go on, okay, page three. These are all turned in from each department. Um, as you can see, the bar is up just because they, they just bring in a lot of bar money, truthfully. Um, <laughs> a lot of drinkers in the area. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, CDBG, Economic Development Grant. Um, talked with Kurt, that application that we had in Sheldon that actually was not accepted, so we are not planning any of that for right now. Uh, the next one, reimbursement, that is the reimbursement of the SEDC director's wage. Um, as you will see, our property taxes are up by just under $20,000 in the general funds. Any questions at this point? Okay, on to page four. Um, I did lower the cable TV. I just, I don't know. I, I don't know how many people actually really have cable TV anymore, but we're still getting a decent, a check, a decent check there, But so I didn't lower it too much. Um, it is. It's a pure guess, yes. Uh, the assessment, that is a little bit lower. Those are going to be coming to an end. That is actually the 2012 sidewalk assessment and the downtown side, sidewalk assessment. Um, the miscellaneous revenues, that is typically driven by the virtual flag sales. 
The what sale? The virtual flags for cleanup day. Oh, okay. Yep. So that ends the general fund. On to the library. Uh, they have asked for the same amount of property taxes. Um, she doesn't have any big surprises there in revenues. On to the airport. As we said, um, we're not allocating any general property taxes for the airport because they are able to cash flow their budget with their cash and investments. Uh, the land rent is locked in there for the airport. Uh, down to park. The park has asked for an additional $10,000 in property taxes, which I have plugged in for your consideration. Um, and the transfer in is a combination from loft and of the portion of hotel motel tax. Uh, museum, nothing changed. They're pretty easy to <laughs> Um The general equipment reserve, the gift receive and rec, that $3,000, the rec recreation department usually finds a project and applies for uh, grant funds from the casino. So that is what that money is, and they just set that in there to pay for projects that come up. It's just a it's just a set aside project fund. Yeah. Uh, your next thing is the Dare program. Um, Dare isn't getting as many revenues as they have in the past, but we did budget what we felt they needed because. Our DARE officer actually retired, so we need to get new certificates and things for our new DARE officer. So we might steal from that, from the seizure fund is what Chief Birch and I talked about. So that is coming up later. Um, community Protection Equipment Reserve, uh, that transfer in of 65000 that's a mistake. If I don't, if it was in there the year before and I didn't actually put that line item in and zero it out, it carries, it just keeps what was in there the year before. So that's my mistake. That's supposed to be a zero. <laughs> that $65,000 yeah. <laughs> should not be. It is that. not, no. Okay. Um, and same with the cemetery perpetual care transfer in, that is at a zero. That is a consideration that you were asking, or sorry, that's a request that we're asking you to consider from loss, but I have zeroed that out. That is not in the budget right now. And then uh, fire protection capital, that is the fire department's fire fees when they respond to fires and things like that. Hotel motel tax, um, we are planning about 180000 in hotel motel tax. We did increase that because of the uh, anticipation of the new hotel opening up. And then we got trails. Uh, trails just does their annual fundraisers. Uh, transfer in is from local option sales tax. Then we have the road use tax, anticipate, anticipated at 716560 That is based on population. Uh, road use tax depreciation. Uh, that is money that comes from road use to purchase their capital equipment requests. Any questions? Okay, then you have the employee benefits. Um, like we said, we budgeted 2.75 and the 10% increase on the other side. So um, the transfer in is actually from local option sales tax that has to be used to go towards insurance. Um, the general property taxes, we put in there what we feel we need. And the reimbursement of the 14273, that is the benefits reimbursement for our additional police officer that we're getting reimbursed for probably in this last year. Uh, emergency, that's a levy that we bought or we levy for to go towards the general fund once we receive the money. One, the, uh, the next one is seizure fund, and that is um, that's Chief Birch's fund that we may use some of that money for there. Any questions? Then you've got your lost. Um, as you can see, you know, hot topic. We've been we've are budgeting less than we have in the past um, from 918 or from 950 to 918 this current year. Then you have TIF, um, and those are just based on our valuations. 
And then you have the next fund is the TIF ALHEP fund. That transfer in is supposed to be a zero also, same as what happened to me before. Then we have the LMI, just interest, aquatic sinking, just interest, FEMA, nothing. Uh, the transfer in, that is from TIF for our debt payments. And then we've got nothing in the event center project fund, but then we do have um, for the, convi uh, the pavilion capital fund, that is their portion. Um, I gotta think here. That comes from Hotel Motel Tax? No, that's the Civic, Civic Center, thank you. Uh, sewer lift upgrade is nothing. Most of the, we're gonna kinda cruise here. Kemper and Trilogy, no revenue. Sunshine, no revenue. 2011 Capital, no revenue. 2017 CIP, we've got a little money left there, so it's some interest. Um, Sheldon Crossing, I don't anticipate revenue there. Just because if we sell lots, now we've developed a capital land sale that's coming up here, and that's where that money is going to go. So we're, gonna, we're getting rid of all these little project funds like that. Okay. Um, aquatic Center, D&D, &D, that's all interest. Here's that capital land sales, 30000 if we sell land. I sell a lot. I just plugged in a number. Um, <coughs> On to the street improvement capital project. That's just interest. Runger is nothing. Uh, water, as Todd said, it's an average increase of 9.5%, which of course increases our tax. Um, let's see, miscellaneous revenues. That's, I mean, that could be a connection fee, a disconnect fee, things like that. Um, Let's see, water improvement, Lewis and Clark. Uh, the water sales, that's what Todd touched on with uh, clay rural water and these other contracts that he's negotiating right now. Um, water depreciation is uh, for their capital items. Uh, 603, water deposits, we've moved all that money, so that's now a part of the water operating. Then you have the water capital fund, which is for the elevated tank. And sewer, we plan sewer reserves, just interest, uh, wastewater depreciation, interest, and in their CIP thing, sewer sinking, that is the transfer from sewer operating for their debt payment. And then you've got the self insurance transfer in is the HSA um, contributions that we do levy for, and cafeteria. <coughs> That's revenue. Question. Where are we at in terms of the wastewater debt? How much do we have left on that? In That's in here. In the Sorry. It's coming up? Yeah, it's in the debt part. Okay. It's Link, linked to AT. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? A it's lot. A lot, yeah. Yeah. What was that question, Greg? Are we three years in the operation on that? Uh, fired up July of 19. Any other questions for Andrew on revenues? Some of those accounts like uh, Skimper and Sunshine that have no activity, yep. can't you just like get rid of them? So because it shows, you mean just in here or it, overall? Overall. We, that's our plan. So that last year you guys approved for us to move merge. those balances, some to water, some to street, some to aquatic, so that I'm not generating any money okay. in them anymore. And then as soon as we get two years from that when we've done made. that, they'll drop off of even this report. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. For water, <coughs> excuse me, water and wastewater, uh, you've got two different line items of miscellaneous revenues that equal uh, 80, 70, 80,000 dollars. Just want to do a little more clarification as to what those revenues are. You said it was like disconnects and stuff like that, but Seems like an awful lot of money for the, you know, a twenty-five dollar disconnect fee or whatever it is. Adds up when you deliver a hundred dollars a month. Is that where we're at, huh? So I think this month was over a hundred. It was yesterday. It's not. It's, I suppose. It's also, yeah. Sorry, it's also like 
when all the snowbirds come back from pulling their meter. It's a $25 charge for reconnection. It's a $25 processing charge. Um, anytime someone moves, we charge a $25 processing fee. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it, it, it adds up. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's one of the things, Wayne, that um, when, I, when I touched on earlier, when I said our, our, our users are more needy, the fact we're delivering over 100 disconnects a month and the fact that we're sometimes turning off dozens, yes. that, that, that chews up time like you can't imagine. And, and, Could, and it creates fees, but it's not fees we want to create. Right, but could we, should we be uh, increasing those fees? We have, and we could look at more. I don't know that that solves your problem. Well, you, you know, obviously you want it to act as a deterrent, right? And, um, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's, it doesn't fix the problem, but... I don't know, is it, if we are, now is this money in pocket or is this stuff that ends up getting written off or? No, we, collect. we don't typically write off anything with utility billing, either if it's unpaid and we don't have a landlord lien, we build, after we've attempted to collect it from the, typically it's a tenant, um, we bill the landlord. The landlord is responsible for that. Bill. Sure. If it is a homeowner or the landlord has filled out a landlord lien form and they are not responsible for the bill, we send them to income offset, which holds their state tax refund if they have one. We send them to AAA collection agency and or assess it to the property. So we don't typically write off utilities. Well, if you're delivered 100 a month which is a crazy amount of work. Um, okay. Let's get compensated for it. Yeah, just the, mat just the labor part of yeah. it. Yeah. Right. We can review in office and, and come up with some recommendations, I guess. It's um, not gonna happen overnight, but we'll, sure. we'll look at it. Yeah. We'll certainly have a discussion. And those slow payers are always gonna be slow payers. I mean, and it really is. I mean, I, I would say 80% of the disconnect people are habitual. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's just insane the amount of money that they waste just because they get one every month. Right. And, you know, and I, I don't mean to try and, you know, uh, to, to, to twist the knife on someone who's on hard times, but, I mean, we look at the fact of the matter that it's just, it's costing us more to deliver these notices, you know, because our labor rates are up. We've got more stuff going on. We have fewer people, you know, so it, yeah. I, I think there's, I would imagine there's more of an incurred cost to the city upon that. Oh, sure there is. And it's not just my staff's time, it's Angie's staff too. I mean, there's a lot of work that happens in the office before it ever gets to my staff's hands. Yeah. Um, you know, and their, their time on the phone and dealing with the people and yeah. You're not wrong, it's an enormous amount of time. When we changed the billing a few years ago too to the 22nd of the month, right? Did yeah. they not add like a week? It gave people another We did, yeah, we tried to give them more from time. The 15th to yeah, we tried to give them more time. We've been encouraging and encouraging and encouraging automatic uh, withdrawal and sign up. And that has, that so, helps. So that, that has helped some, mm -hmm. um, um, but there's just, boy, there's a boatload of people that like to give us extra money every month, I guess. I don't, I don't, we don't understand it because we'd rather not have it. We'd rather they paid their bill on time, their normal bill, not with extra fees. Yeah, because let's face it, it's, it probably costs the city money. Well, it's more money they could be spending someplace else. Yeah. And in, in our community. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways. Anything else on this subject one thing I did want to note on the revenues there's a line in there that says the you know the Lewis and Clark surcharge and you'll see it it brings in the hundred and thirty four ish thousand dollars a year and then above that is one of the water sales and then we're working on another one obviously but um, you know we talked about signing on for that expansion and we talked about that being four point some million dollars you know over time and we're making yearly payments on that um, there on the on the path we're on we may have to do a little bonding on the end of that 
depending upon how much water sales we get done. But I, but I did want to tell you that we're going to be able to get to like 2030, maybe 2031 for sure, making cash payments on our expansion. And I think that is a huge accomplishment and, and very beneficial to our rate payers. And I didn't want to get out of this budget hearing without, without you understanding that. There's, we will pay several million dollars in cash because we're collecting in advance versus borrowing. So yeah, my great investment. Yeah. Thanks, Todd. Uh, I had asked the question about the levy and how that what it t meant in terms of dollars. So on a two hundred thousand dollar home, by Sam's calculations, it would reduce your taxes approximately thirty two dollars. Woo! <laughs> Not a lot, but yeah. it's going. I'll take it the right direction. You're almost going to McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> no, we are done. So, well, it's a full celebrate, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't fight. <fly. laughs> okay. Let's move on then to expenses. All right. Going into expenses. Okay. So this is a budget that Scott turned into me. He kind of hit on it with his um, memo and his different increases and things like that. Um, I did plug in a fifth of our, the software payroll upgrade, so that is in his other equipment line item there. Um, there's nothing in the capital improvement that is uh, a request out of loss that you guys will consider. EMA, uh, their budget is the same. <laughs> Fire, uh, Fire did um, plan for a little bit of a wage increase. Uh, they have a new line item, a line item, fire equipment. It's, it's. We just created a line item so that they have something where they can directly purchase equipment from. It's not additional money in their budget, really. Um, where was that money coming from before? They had. It was in a mix of things. It could have been their vehicle operations. It could have been repair and maintenance. It could have been in the CIP. It's just some smaller equipment, isn't it, Brad? Yeah, it was just off. mainly for equipment because, you know, we have... Was it like non-CIP non stuff? Yeah, you know, everyday stuff because we have a, uh, a truck uh, repair maintenance buildings. We have vehicle operations, supplies, vehicle equipment. And e so it, we really don't have anything that says it's fire equipment, you know, like an axe or flashlights or... Um, fittings for hoses or even hoses, you know, we damage or whatever. So it's just something that we took money out of those other items and created that $5,000. So we had a line item just for fire equipment. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, maintenance contract that we increased just a little bit. They uh, have to have, of course, their trucks inspected and all of that on an annual basis. Um, their capital items is nothing. Again, that's a request from loss. Ambulance uh, wages are up just a little bit. Um, that's not due to an incre like a planned increase for their members or anything. It's just um, their full-time increases. Um, let's see here. Not a lot of change on Kristen's budget there. So miscellaneous protection, that is for Scott's uh, secretary, so that's just a small increase in the wage, a little bit on the phone. Um, animal control is now paid for out of loss. Street lighting, we did increase to 150000 just because we have added lights and we have another year of rate increases. Um, recreation, uh, that actually, the wage is lower because we're going to pay for part of that from parks. Um, Not a lot of changes there either. Um, program supplies up a little bit just because of inflation. On to cemetery. <coughs> uh, the only thing that really changed there, or not even a change in dollars, but their capital improvement is mostly for trees this year. Uh, they've got a cemetery has a lot of trees that need work on or removal. Uh, pool. Uh, they, their wages are up. They have explained in their memo 
why that has an increase. Operating supplies are up just a little bit. They did add a line for an emergency repair. Um, Todd and Jake basically decided to do that at the end of the year, wasn't it, when we found a big major leak at the pool? <laughs> basically, if you look in any of my departments, you're going to find a line item that has an emergency repair line item. And it's, it's dollars we insert just in case because something always fails. And I didn't have it in the pool. And we had a failure in the pool at the end of this year. And there I go, I have an unbudgeted expenditure again. So we decided to add one uh, just as good measure. It's a guess. If we don't run in anything, we don't spend the dollars. If we run into something, there's at least some dollars available. I would, I would rather plan for an emergency than, than not. Okay. All right. Questions? Everybody good? All right. Pavilion. Uh, this is submitted by Tricia and her board. A uh, little bit of an increase to the linen. Um, I think that's because you've gone with a different company, haven't you? Yeah, we're trying to balance that out a little bit. Okay. Um, little increase in their building and maintenance. Um, and the increase to the liquor and bar, like she stated, just because the cost uh, to purchase is up. Let's see. Fireworks. Before we go on. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, and I did just think of this now. Wasn't there some kind of an agreement with Cobblestone? Because I don't, in their CIP, they would have looking for a expanded parking lot. Didn't we have something in agreement with Cobblestone that there was going to be a parking lot that would be shared or not? I I'm not aware of that. I don't recall that. Yeah, in the contract, we, part of the contract, we negotiated an easement uh, on the ground that Cobblestone purchased. If and when we'd ever decide to expand the parking lot to the north, we have an opportunity to do that within the agreement. So Trish is aware of that. Um, I think ideally you'd want to go west as opposed to north, um, but it's an option. Okay, so it's just an easement, not actual. Right. Correct. Just an easement. Yep. Cement. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yep. We'd have to we have to build it, maintain it, and all that other stuff. Okay. But all right. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Fireworks. Um, that's a, just a pass through with uh, the village, so I assume they would we would stay the same. That's twenty thousand. Then you have economic development wages, uh, the contracts and payments. That's actually our membership fees with Northwest Iowa Planning and Development. Council wages, mayor's wages, finance admin wages, uh, lump sum. I that's the election. I since we never know when we're going to have a special election. I just plugged the number in there. Um, consultant professional fees, those are MICA's fees. So I believe fall, yeah, we have an election coming yeah. up this fall. Sure. So you'll need that. Okay. Uh, general fund um, fees, that's going to be the village cleaning, um, prayer and maintenance. We always budget for heat pumps out of there. Um, Electric, we put up just a little bit. Gas, up just a little bit. Uh, the consultant and professional fees, that is actually for planning solutions with Steve Helgram. That's where I pay that from. Um, How do you want to spend it? Mm -hmm. uh, capital improvement, that's a fifth of the software upgrade for the payroll. And the transfer out, um, that's the civic center tax, and uh, half of the cemetery section's wage will go to reimburse the water department. Then you have the library. Because um, the section is paid out of the water department. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, the library, this is what Nicole turned in. Um, not many increases there. She kind of touched on what she's done. Um, no capital improvements there yet this year. Okay. Then we've got airport, and they've submitted this budget. They do have a little bit of an increase in their repair and maintenance and um, contract work. Uh, they do have uh, $10,000 in hopes of replacing the courtesy, courtesy van. Any questions? All right, parks. You'll see their wages are up. Like I said, we're going to pay some of the rec out of the parks because they're going to do more with the parks. Um, some of the grounds and maintenance is up just a little bit. Uh, the capital improvement, tree removal, bathroom updates, sidewalk, bench, picnic tables. That's what those dollars are for. All right, so on to museum. Uh, they are planning to install some LED lighting, so they've got a repair building and maintenance there of $12,000. Um, otherwise, just some small increases and some under the capital equipment, the $12,000. Uh, Cindy had just written in some repairs that they want to make. Questions? All right, then we get into uh, the minor equipment, the 8698. That is to replace the city council chairs. Hey, all right, we can sit in luxury. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have to have the low rider on. Yeah. There. yeah. <laughs> uh, the transfer out, that is money that has just been sitting in this fund. Uh, it goes back to dinner date, rent, uh, some hail damage insurance money, and I want to get rid of this fund, so I'm just planning to move that to the general fund to help the, the general fund. Uh, the 1500 that is the D.A.R.E. program. All right, then we go to the ambulance depreciation. Uh, as you guys decided the other night, they are going to pay for their new full-time employee benefits from this fund, so that's what those are. And then they've got their capital um, of 60000 for radios, equipment, pagers, splints, all that good stuff. And then that the transfer out of there is supposed to be a zero. That was another one that I didn't get caught. And another one I didn't catch is fire capital or rent and lease equipment rental. That's supposed to be zero. That was when we were renting the aerial last year. Questions? Uh, out of the fire capital, they do have some equipment. Uh, they have plugged in uh, 12,500 capital items and 11,325 for some additional heat source. Um, hotel motel tax. Uh, that is what we would anticipate paying the marketing committee and then the transfer out to the civilian and the park. Sorry. Trail. Trail should have their new project done, so they're back to the 25000 to just maintain. Um, road use. Not a lot. They've got some minor increases in their operations. Um, street repairs, just some, that's just some little projects. Uh, street lighting, we left the same. Traffic control is the same. Snow removal is the same. Transfer out, that's for their capital items. Uh, there you see that they've got that emergency repair line item and then their equipment there. Uh, the streets, we're not going to do any streets out of the street department. Those are going to be done out of different different funds. Any questions there? All right. The next several pages are all of the employee benefits. 
Uh, like we said, uh, we planned 2.75% wage increase. So that's, that affects the FICA and the IPERS. We did 10% for insurance. So that's work comp and group insurance. Um, so if you guys want to look through that, there's not a lot for me to explain there unless you've got questions. Does the IPERS, is this where like with the ambulance request for IPERS for volunteers, does that roll into this or is that in their budget? That would roll into this. Is that figured in on these no. numbers? Okay. So that could potentially go up. Okay. The ambulance total being lower, that's because we're taking money from the, is that because it's coming out of the depreciation fund? Ambulance being lower in the trust and agency? Well, in the, for the city benefits portion. <coughs> yes, that would be part of it. Okay. Yep, because we had two part-time that were coming out of here for those things, and now they're coming out of that full-time, which we combined the two part-time, right. coming out of depreciation. That transfer out, that is to, uh, that's the HSA levy that we levied for, so that goes to the self-insurance fund because the self-insurance is what pays the HSA. Then you have your emergency fund transfer. Uh, that's a levy, that's just funds that we levy for that transfer to the general fund. The $5,000 is seizure fund. Then you get into the loss. Uh, as we said, you know, we've discussed, I'm sorry, page 34. Uh, we've discussed this at where length. Do we, where do we go? 34, you said? Yes, yes my report, page 34. Okay, we jump real fast there. Okay. 34. She went way ahead. First line item on this piece total. Yep, 5,000. Yep. Okay. So with local option sales tax, we have only plugged in um, what we had discussed at the previous uh, council meeting and the transfers out. Um, we have not plugged in any of the uh, requests for you to consider, so those are not in there. Um, TIF, we've discussed that. Uh, biggest thing is probably the TIF capital improvements and the transfer out. The transfer out goes to the debt service for debt payments. Any questions on either of those? Okay. Then we're gonna you're gonna see probably quite a few zeros here in the next couple pages because these are a lot of the project funds again. Um, the transfer out of FEMA, the bottom of page 36, that is uh, that's COVID money basically that's going towards the water tower. So that needs to be transferred out so we can extend that out of the water. Then you've got all uh, your debt, principal, and interest. Um, bottom of the page there, 19,000. Uh, that is the pavilion capital improvement where Trisha said she's going to update the green room and I have plugged in a fifth of the payroll software upgrade. All right, then a sewer lift upgrade is nothing. Uh, the 97,430, uh, that is some of those combined capital funds that we have approved to move in this current fiscal year. Um, this is one we're not actually moving. We're just going to pay for asphalt overlay and crack sealing out of this fund. And um, 97,430 is what we're projected to have left in it at the end of this fiscal year. But like I, like I have here, plus anything that's left over from the current year that have we haven't spent. Okay, Sunshine, we have nothing. Um, 2011 CIP, we got nothing. Uh, 
2017, nothing. Sheldon Crossing, no expenses. Aquatic Center, no expenses. Uh, dangerous and dilapidated, I did put in 18,000. Um, that's basically what is left in the fund if Sam needs it to do um, work in areas that aren't in TIF or something like that. That's what that would be used for. And that, isn't there also <coughs> something in the, uh, oh, I see, it was the, in the, Local option sales tax as a transfer for the two D and D to pay for the recycling bin. Yes. Yeah. For the what? Re the community. The community recycling, recycling bin. Oh. Yeah. Uh, the street improvement capital project uh, that is Todd finishing up um, his project from the the bond funds, which is primarily probably primarily the traffic signal. Traffic signal and uh, 2023 patching. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? All right. Water. Okay. The the water wage is there. It, don't panic. That's because of the two retirements that we <laughs> the two retirement payouts that we have in there. We are budgeting, um, anticipating to pay out their 50% of their sick, 100% of their vacation, personal time. Okay. And the addition of the employee. Yes, sorry. Um, Rex wage going full. Yes. So that's why it gets stacked up so high. Um, they're proprietary, so they pay for all of their benefits. So that's what those are. Uh, not a lot of changes on the water side. Um, down towards the bottom, the consultant and professional fees, 25000 That's that lead and copper study that you guys approved. Um, the electric utility went from 93000 to 110000 Is that normal? Well, <clears throat> we've seen quite a bit of increase, and we're also making a fair amount of estimation, Wayne, on how we're going to operate once LNC is here. So without getting overly complicated, there's a chance I can flow through water and there's a chance I have to boost water depending upon what flow rates we're taking water at. We're erring on the side of we're going to have to boost more, so we upped it because of that. Give us a year of operation. I feel like that number is going to come back, but I'm prepping for the worst. Sorry, there's also a new line in here of utility, which is Lewis and Clark water of 250,000. That is us buying the water from Lewis and Clark, assuming that we're connected in the, in the next fiscal year. Um, I do have water paying for a fifth of the payroll software upgrade. And their debt is paid, so that's good. Um, not a lot on water. Any questions there? Okay. Uh, water Improvement Fund. So this is the fund that pays for the Lewis and Clark connection. So we do have some engineering fees of 111 that we are proposing next year. Um, the merchandise for resale is uh, the clay rural water and um, the contract he's negotiating. And then we do have the project, which is the combined fund, combined project funds of 419000 plus uh, some other funds that will need to be paid. Water depreciation has emergency repair and then all of their capital projects. Water deposits, we will do away with. Um, bottom of that page, uh, consultant and professional fees. The 79100 is the engineering that will be left on the elevated tank and water line. And then the um, utility system and structure, that's what the 1.7 is what's left on the elevated tank and line construction. Any questions on either of those? Okay, moving on to sewer. 
Uh, they are also proprietary, so they pay for all of their uh, benefits. So those are all there. Um, dues and membership. Let's see. They did increase their motor vehicle operation supplies. Um, that has to do with uh, some gas and some fuel, some fuel for different uh, things at the plant. Yeah, I'll explain that one. That was that huge power outage we had, all those brownouts. We went on straight generator power at wastewater for 24 hours, and um, <clears throat> we got that. We get that place has the biggest generator the city owns, um, and we hadn't been filling the tank because it holds so much. It cost us 5,000 bucks to put fuel back in the tank, <laughs> and we got to thinking about that that we probably didn't budget appropriately for that, and we also got to thinking about how good of an exercise it was to actually run the place under full load on that equipment for a 24-hour period. So it's something we're going to actually start practicing going forward. Understand it has a cost, but we need to budget for that cost because, yeah, that was an expensive fuel bill. But if you don't use fuel, it goes bad over time. Right, and, and that's what we got to talking about too. So actually that storm kind of probably ended up to be a good operational eye-opener for us. So we're, we're going to change process in a few areas because of it. But yeah, that's why. <laughs> See, I tell you about our mistakes once in a while, too. Um, not a lot of other big increases for them. Another fifth of the payroll software coming from them. And then uh, transfer out, that is for the uh, sewer debt payment and their capital items. Nothing with the north side sewer, sewer depreciation, emergency, and their CIP items. Then you have the sewer sinking, which is their uh, principal and interest payment on the building, on their debt. Self-insurance um, claims, I budgeted 50,000. We seem to be staying well under that, so I stuck with it. Um, HSA benefit is up a little bit uh, just due to staffing changes and cafeteria that's just a wash with revenue and expenses. Just the expenses, people. Any questions? Six o'clock. <laughs> All right, so into the transfers. Um, these are kind of mostly, a, they're more for me, I think, than any of you, but when you see those lump sums of like the general transfer in, this gives it a break, gives you a breakdown that shows you what, where it's all coming from. So as you have it by what it's going into and you've got it going where it's coming from. questions on transfers so is your new software gonna do all this for you no. so you don't need to do separate spreadsheets and pull no things it's just up. payroll oh it's just it's just payroll that I want to upgrade oh. yeah no no I'll still have to do all <laughs> um, emergency depreciation um, this has changed uh, over the years it's not I don't even know if we need this sheet in here I mean it was a lot different when many other departments were pulling from this fund, but uh, they're anticipated to have a $571,000 balance at the end of next fiscal year. So we, uh, we will continue to look to see if um, their operations can, if this fund can handle their operations in the future. Uh, it's nothing that we want to jump into, so we will continue to look at that. Any questions on that? I do have a question going back to this software update for payroll. Yeah. What's the total on that software? It's a little over 20000 Have we looked at maybe outsourcing the payroll and what that I could haven't. potentially save the city? Well, I haven't because our software is all interfaced. Okay. I'd have to do manual entry every time there was payroll so that it would show up in the general ledger as an expense. Okay. I was just so, no, that Sam okay. actually asked that. Okay. He did ask that like a year ago, I want to say, when okay. we were looking at software. Yeah, because I thought, well, 
Yeah. Is there a cost savings if you outsourced it you I, know, compared to? I don't know, okay. I, but it would be, it's not, there would, would be still be work. work on our okay. side or you guys would never see the expense. Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, balance estimates. I did this a little bit similar <laughs> to our treasurer's report. So you have what the first column is our cash at the end of December and then our investments. Um, what we anticipate for revenue expenses yet this year. Cash, June 30. Did you have a question? Well, I just go ahead. Okay. Um, then from what we budgeted, the revenue for 23-24 and expense for 23-24, which brings your cash and investment. But how did the increase in revenue from 23 to 23-4? That's, that's great. Well, the revenue of 22-23 is only here. It's what we're, we're planning to get yet. Yeah, cool. yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Blur was coming. All right. Well done. Thank you. Any questions for me? Get a gigantic muzzle. They equal each other. Each other. And then I found all those. I'm like, if you can do as well. I will, <laughs> I will try. Uh, I have three memos. Um, you, say, uh, you know, this is I would say, do it better about this, but I felt about four budgets that I've been involved. <laughs> Just to repeat what I said, is I feel really good about where we're at with this uh, with this budget. I feel better than I felt about all the previous budgets that I've been in the calendar. If you look at the chart at the top of the first page of my report. Uh, has a history of the general fund, a number of factors that um, that they um, play into that. Um, one of the factors is interest, and there is um, moving a lot of the airport expense um, into tax payment financing instead of the general fund. There's there's also uh, there's been some tips. So if you scroll to my to my memo, um, the your backfill. So look look at what we've been from to. Um, drop and cap we're taking only sixty six thousand more than max levy residents six more new. Right. We've been able to that blow, which in past and by it's not it's not as bad but that's I mean yeah it's a it's a model it's a lot of money but it would be and another zero it would be significant. You were sitting on a general fund cash balance of sixty seventy thousand and prior so to fourth of twenty seventeen it was even worse. Mm -hmm. But yeah. but with that being said, that loss is spread over all the different departments True. that we let before. Mm -hmm. So it's not all a general fund loss. Right. Okay. That's a good point. I, I would say that it probably impacts the general fund the most percentage wise the most, yes. but you're that's mm -hmm. a good point. Um, so I have nothing else on that memo. Do you have any questions on that one? Okay. The next one probably need some more time to suggest or to digest this one. This has been, this memo has been a work of work in progress because I'm getting more. I do want to, before you go on, the, I did the last paragraph there talking about our debt threshold, where we're at now versus where we were at. We'll talk more about this tomorrow. We're going to, but that is huge. Uh, and I think we will celebrate that tomorrow after we hear from Scott. We don't want to yeah. <clears throat> All right. Sorry. Go on. All right. So the next memo is one combination. It's very difficult on comparisons, and you know I will get the now and just say, you know, and, but again, these are still important questions. You know, and, but again, these are still important questions, and in this current engineering environment, uh, provided this being asked by citizens and comparing other. So what are the data points? That they so I've been, th these are, this is an outcome of the emergency services task force. I've been looking at um, several, um, these are really um, insurance. Um, I'm here, if you want double insurance, full requirement. And if you remember uh, Denny and Brad's a year ago, and going on, we didn't really start working on the last um, year of the numbers, the budget, you asked for that to be um, included. So with the, um, still on the first responder recruitment and retention. Is that something that we would 
<clears throat> decide on a particular route tomorrow or how what is the roadmap as far as implementing some or any of these different recruitment deals? Well, none of these are currently budgeted and I, was, I, was, I got pretty busy with the other aspects of the budget so I didn't finish up the memos until later in the process so we may need some time to digest. None of these are really a, a surprise. They've all been brought forward in various ways. The insurance rates would drop so 